Welcome to Dick Geyer Gymnasium here at Bishop Hartley High School. Tonight, we've got girls basketball coming your way. It is a CCL matchup between the Lady Hawks of Bishop Hartley and the Lady Stallions of St. Francis de Sales. I'm Bob McElligan, joined by Randall Smith Jr. here tonight. And Randall, this should be a good matchup. First of all, it is Hartley and de Sales. I don't care what the sport is. I don't care if it's boys or girls. It doesn't matter. This is a big rivalry for both of these teams. Well, you know what? I am so excited to see a game. I haven't been in a gym in so long. It's been a couple years. It's like it's been longer than that. Can't wait to see some good Central Catholic League basketball. Yeah, that is a really good point. Uh, just to get back in here, you're right. It's such a uh, good thing, and it's going to be exciting here this evening to watch these two teams go head-to-head -head and see what they're able to do. This Bishop Hartley team comes in with a 6-1 and one record. Uh, they had been playing very well. They were undefeated until they ran into Granville just a couple of days ago. Can't wait to see them play. Like I said once again, it's always a tough, tough, tough teams in the Central Catholic League. And these two teams are rivals. Uh, they're rivals on the football field. They're rivals with boys basketball. They're rivals with girls basketball. So I can't wait to see this matchup. Yeah, the uh, team's being introduced right here. You see the Hartley Lady Hawks uh, being introduced on the floor right now. And I'll tell you what, um, there are two players that really do stand out on this team. And one is a senior, one is a sophomore, and that senior is Cammie Kordekrak. She has been dominant throughout this entire season. And Ella Brandwee is a sophomore, and there she is. Uh, Ella, just a, a huge forward. She's so good at pulling down rebounds and uh, in scoring points. I saw her play here uh, about a week or so ago against Gehanna. On that night, she was having problems getting points, but she was still doing her job. She was getting rebounds, and that's really what it is. It's a team game. If you play a team game, you can win every night. And Brandon, we, uh, just to tell my age a little bit, not that I'm super old, I remember her father, Tom Brandon, we playing for the Ohio State Buckeyes back in the early 90s with Jim Jackson and Perry Carter and Treg Lee and Mark Baker and all those guys. So I can't wait to see her. Well, you're not going to have to wait any longer. She is out there for the opening tip off. Stephanie Karras, senior forward of DeSales, opposing her. And Brandon, we wins it. And here we go. Bella Parker immediately across the timeline looking to sit up the first play for Hartley. And just looking right now, it looks like Hartley has a huge size advantage with Brandewe down low. In the corner trying to find some room. Lexi Cashwell comes back over to Milena Williams. That one was touched last by the sales. Went off uh, the hand of Stephanie Karras. And the ball is inbounded by Williams. Brandewe beyond the arc. Got it down to Parker. They keep it alive. Williams, nice bounce pass to uh, McElrath. And Parker will put it up. And she puts it in for three. And that's how the Lady Hawks start. Nice corner shot by Parker. So now it'll be DeSales trying to answer as they come up the floor. Jaden Arnold getting it over to Stephanie Karras. Looking to loft it down low, picked off by Parker. Nice pick off by Parker. Parker tries to put it underneath to Brandewe, and that one went off a hand straight up in the air, and that will give DeSales a chance to bring it back. Almost looked like there was a foul down low. I didn't know if the referee saw that or not, but. Now we get a whistle here and a turnover, and that'll send the ball back the other way. You know, it's funny you say that about a foul. I would expect that this game will get physical tonight. It's, again, it's just the way that they play. Oh, yeah, tough CCL basketball. I love it. Williams looking to control things here for Hartley. Back and forth with Parker. Try to get it to the foul line, kick it back out. Here's Parker again outside the arc. Doesn't uh, shoot it this time. Try to force it to Brandaway, and it's turned over. Long pass ahead. Williams, nice uh, job of intercepting that. Two on one. Elena Williams will take it herself, and she gets fouled. It was a good way of the sales. Uh, she fronted uh, Brandewe down low. I, I, and you know, the, the big thing with that is you're probably going to have to front her like that because of her height advantage. So Alexa Cashwell getting called for that foul. And the sales will inbound. See a little bit of pressure from Hartley. As the sales brings it up the floor, just a three to nothing game. McElrath tried to make the steal, missed it. Good job to regroup and get back defensively. 
Parker's all over the court right now. Gracie Wilson gets it into the corner. Come back out to Arnold. Jaden Arnold from the foul line. Looked to make a pass, and they were lucky they were able to maintain possession of that. Around to the left side. Here comes a shot for three. That's off the rim. No good. Bella Parker will bring it in and settle it down for Hartley. A lot of ball movement there, Randall, but nothing to show for it. A whole lot of ball movement. Let's see what Hartley does right here as they're setting up the offense. Kara McElrath over to Milena Williams. Brandewee back out to McElrath once again. Back into the corner, Williams. Her shot for three. Off the rim, no good. Parker battles for the rebound. Can't bring it down. That's Stephanie Karras that's got it. One thing I noticed early on is Hartley's taking a lot of jump shots. They're taking a lot of three-point shots, so they're not afraid to shoot that outside shot. Is that surprising to you at all, having a big body like Brandewee right underneath the basket that they're shooting from the outside? Are they trying to draw that defense out? Well, it, what it looks like is they're, they're looking for, but what I'm seeing is there's a lot of double teaming, there's a lot of fronting, so you can, you can tell they studied a lot of film on her. Well, here's a chance for DeSales and a bounce pass across. Got uh, knocked off a hand and out of bounds. Yeah, and back to like I said about Brandewee, it's like you can tell DeSales has watched a lot of film on her and that they're trying to front her. They're, they're, they obviously see that Hartley's trying to go down low to her, but DeSales is doing a great job with denying that. Low scoring indeed. There's only been one basket in this game, and it belongs to Bella Parker. It was a three-pointer. Right now, Hartley trying to add to their 3-0 lead, and nice floater right from the foul line by Lexi Cashwell. Great, great, great pump fake down right there. 5-0 game, just under five minutes to go here in the opening quarter. Sales just wanting to set something up. Karras, good fake, starts to drive in, and we're going to have a traveling call. One thing I like about Harley is they're really pushing the ball. They're setting it up. They're not wasting any time. McElrath over to Williams. They get it down to Brandaway. She bobbled it for a second, stays with it, didn't get the basket, but does draw the foul. If you noticed, uh, Bridget Womber came over there and she helped out. And that's what they're, and that's what the Celtics are going to have to do tonight. They're probably going to have to double team Brandon Wee because, like I said, once again, we're talking about the height advantage. There's not anybody on the the Celtics team taller than 5'11", so you're going to probably see a lot of double teams on Brandon Wee tonight. First foul shot off the rim and no good. Shania Davis checks into the game in place of Bella Parker. Brandewee with the second of two. And that is good. That'll make it a six to nothing game. Sales on the left side. Karras drives it in, backs off, takes the jumper, no good. McElrath right there for the rebound. Looks like DeSales is not getting their shot set. They're taking some fast shots. And right there, they try to go too fast, and that ball gets picked off. McElrath, little jump shot. That's good. Good shot by McElrath. Oh, so nice job. And a timeout on the floor here. Sorry, Randall, go ahead. Um, that's okay. Hartley's coming out. They're, they're taking good shots. They're getting up and down the court. They're playing great defense. I like what I'm seeing out of Hartley right now. Yeah, just dictating the game. It's not just about the, the eight to nothing lead. Uh, as you were saying, the sales forcing some shots a little bit here, maybe trying to go too fast. And, and you know, even when it's a three to nothing game, they're coming down and they're not really creating chances. So once that happens, you start to, well, I don't know if panic's the right word, but you start to get concerned even though it's early in the game and do some things you shouldn't do. And, and what I'm seeing from the sales, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything wrong with them. I just think it's, it's early in the game, and they just need to settle down a little bit, get into the flow of the game, get into the rhythm, set their plays, and get some good shots, play good defense. I think it's one of those things where, for them, they almost need something to fall just to start to feel good, just to feel like they can get a basket in this game because they've some, come so close, but they have nothing. Nothing like getting that first shot. It's like when you get that first shot, it's like, whoo, wipe your head off a little bit, get that good first shot in, then you can go back out there and go after it. Selena Davis will do the inbounding for DeSales. Two, 
Gets that in right away to Gracie Wilson. Just inside the arc with a shot for two off the front of the rim, no good. Loose ball on the floor, and we get a whistle and a jump ball. Possession arrow goes in favor of DeSales. Wasn't a bad shot that DeSales took. Um, actually, that was probably the best shot that I've seen them take so far this game. Right, it didn't bound again. Nice little bounce pass. This one is up, and that is no good. Bridget Womber couldn't get it to fall. Brandon Wee right there defending. Now it's Brandon Wee on the other side. Turns, puts it up, and it's in and out. She definitely got a good look right there. Now here's a shot for three from the left side. Again, finds the rim, but not the basket. And Cashwell will turn it around. Tried to get that over to Milena Williams. Gets knocked out of bounds. It stays Hartley ball. We were just talking about if they were trying to get the ball down to Brandewee because they were taking a lot of outside shots. And you can tell that that's what, that's Hartley's bread and butter to get that shot down, get the, get the ball down low to Brandewee. McElrath. Looking to go into the corner and a little misread right there by Cashwell. She goes one way, the ball goes the other. A lot of turnovers right now. I know this is first quarter jitters. A lot of turnovers by both teams right now. Hallibrand comes out to take a breather here for a moment. Bella Parker is back in. If you're sales, you probably want to take some advantage of that. Any uh, of the time that Brandewe is on the bench creates more of a, as you were saying, better size differential as the ball gets poked out of bounds. Again, it's still DeSales' ball. Most definitely. Anytime you take somebody with that size out, I would just feed it, feed it down low. Get as many shots as you can down low while she's out. Because it's going to be a, a tough, tall order to get shots when she's down there. Good job by Milena Williams to break up that pass, the inbound pass, and here is Cashwell. One-handed off the glass and in. Great Euro step. I love it. Great Euro step by Cashwell. The sales again. Gets inside the arc. They dish it, puts it up, and that one is good. And that one falls. Good shot by DeSales. Gracie Sabo gets credit for that. First points of the game for the Lady Stallions. And they pick off a pass, and they'll bring it back the other way. Trying to get it inside. Sabo turns, puts it up one hand, and couldn't get the roll. Brando, we getting ready to check back in. She goes to the scorer's table. In the meantime, Hartley lofts it on the left side, stepping up, taking a shot off the back of the rim is Davis. And this is going to be uh, Hartley ball. The one thing about that Euro step is 15, 20 years ago, you didn't see it a lot. Now you see so many people using that Euro step. It got me thinking, I want to go and go to the gym and try to work on the Euro step myself. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan Donnelly checks into the game for the first time for the Lady Hawks. Cashwell, she's got four points, but a pass. A little bit too high for Brandewee, believe it or not. A little bit too high for Brandewee. I think what, what they're looking at right now is they're trying to get it to her a little bit too much right now. Just slow down the pace, and that shot will be there all night. Yeah, and I think she will be a factor in this game, but like you just said, you don't necessarily have to force it right now. Just let it kind of come naturally as there's another traveling violation. Yeah, no need to force it. It's going to be there all night as long as she stays out of foul trouble. And if they're double teaming her, that means somebody's going to be open. I think they're trying to get it to her. Just you look at her body language when she misses. I mean, she really wants to start contributing offensively here. And I think they're, they're trying to give her that opportunity. She is just outside the lane right now as Parker tries to go to the top of the key. Uh, Brandewee getting free down low, but it is McElrath that takes the shot and puts it in. Great shot by McElrath. I'm loving this backcourt with McElrath and Parker right now. The sale's still struggling. Now Brandewee going to make it even tougher. Nice pass on the left side. Top of the key, shot for three, and that's off the back of the rim and no good. Sales pulls down the rebound, and Brandewee swats away that shot. 
Again, offensively, they stay with it and finally are going to get some points out of that. Tell you what, give Jaden Arnold a heck of a lot of credit. She just would not give up. Yeah, she missed that first shot. She kept fighting, got the ball back. And one thing you always hear is if you keep fighting, something's good is going to happen. Hartley down along the baseline. Again, they try to get it to Brandaway. That one got tipped away, and it will stay Hartley ball. One thing I like is Parker, she's a she's a 10th grader. Parker's 11th grader. McElrath's a 10th grader. So you have an underclassman backcourt playing as good as they're playing. I'm very impressed what I'm seeing right now. Yeah, and good decision-making by very, those two. Very great decision-making. Again, they're trying to find Brandaway. She's got it, but we're going to get a whistle and a foul. That's Gracie Stabo that will be called for the foul. And as I'm looking over the roster, their, their top players are underclassmen, so we're going to have a lot of talent here with, at Hartley for over the next couple years. Bridget Womber comes back into the game for DeSales. Quick little inbounds pass to Brandaway, and DeSales had her defended well. Cashwell, kick it back out to McElrath, and her shot is no good. Brandowie had the rebound for a moment, but Cashwell in there to clean it up. She loses it. I'll tell you what, Hartley just can't help but find the ball right now, and Parker gets it! At the buzzer, great shot by Parker. Bella Parker has two baskets in this game. They've both been three-pointers. I think and that was, uh, I'm sorry, go no, ahead. No, go ahead. I think that was one of those home court shots. <laughs> well, it took long enough to fall, didn't it? Right, exactly. 15 to four is the score. The Lady Hawks are up on the Lady Stallions at the end of one quarter of play. This is Bishop Hartley, girls basketball here on Score On Air. In sports, you want to have a player that can get the job done right every time. A real all-star, somebody that's dependable and you can turn to when the game is tough. That player in the audio video industry from setting up your home's Wi-Fi network and offices, conference rooms, to setting up home theater inside or outside, to setting up the systems to make your home run smarter and safer as well. The theater people can do it all with the quality of professionalism you can expect every single time. That isn't just a great all-around player. That is an all-star. That is why we are the leaders in audiovisual installation in Central Ohio. So call us at 614-604-6327 or check out our website at ttpcolumbus.com to figure out which products will fit you. And don't forget, amplify your personality with the theater. Well, if you're enjoying this broadcast and you'd like to learn how it's done behind the scenes, check out the Ohio Media School located in Columbus. If you're interested in radio production, TV broadcasting, or digital media, the Ohio Media School is a choice for you. Visit Ohio Media School at beonair.com slash Columbus. You can also find the Ohio Media School on all your favorite social media channels. Ohio Media School, we change lives. Second quarter getting underway. Bishop Hartley up 15 to four over to sales. Bounce pass down low, Brandewee. Can't get it to go, but she'll pick up the rebound and had it stripped out of her hands. Shot comes from the far corner, and that one doesn't fall either. Great Tell you what, Randall, she's in sale. disbelief. Disbelief that she can't get a basket here. Exactly, exactly. Great defense by the sales, though. Can't take anything away from them. The sales trying to drive. Couldn't do it. They do a nice job of making some passes to finally create a shot, and that is good. Gracie Wilson. Tell you what, she's making some shots right now. If she gets a little bit hotter, this is going to get her real close. Elena Williams in the lane, bounce pass Brandewee off the rim, no good, and Lomber pulls down the rebound. On the sales now has a chance to come up the floor and do something they really haven't done throughout this game. It scores on back-to-back -back possessions. Tell you what, I would go with what works. Keep shooting those jumpers. Well, continue to look it over. Kylie Van Fossen gets it into Womber. She turns, wanted to drive. Brandewee is there. Oh, what patience. Bridget Womber just waited it out. As soon as she saw the opening, she buried it. Good shot by the 5'11 freshman Womber. Now it's Hartley. 
Top of the key to the foul line. Cashwell kicks it back to Williams for three. No good. Brandon, we couldn't pull in the rebound. Wamber's playing great defense. She's a freshman. She has her hands full on both sides, offensively and defensively. Now the sales. Van Fossen, we got a timeout call. If I'm not mistaken, I think I've seen Bridget Walmer playing on the JV earlier. Not for sure, but I, she looked very familiar like she was playing JV earlier. She's doing a great job on, on Branderwee right now. She well, got warmed up in the JV game, right? Most definitely. <laughs> and, 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 and one thing about it, she's the tallest player out there mm -hmm. for the sales. So she's going she's gonna to have her hands full trying to guard Brandewee, but as of right now, she's doing a great job. Yes, she is. And again, that patience on the basket that she got, uh, she didn't rush it. We were talking about earlier how they were rushing it, and she didn't, and it benefited her. And now, if you look what's gone on here, uh, DeSales, yeah, they're still down by six, but all of a sudden that momentum is tilting a little bit in their favor because they're starting to get the ball to fall. Scrappy bunch. They're fighting. They're crawling. I love it. And they inbound it. Jaden Arnold puts it on the right side. They get it back to her. Wants to loop it down low, turning and putting that one up. Uh, no good for Gracie Sabo. McElrath back the other way quickly, and she just takes it right to the hoop. Oh, wow. She drove straight to the basket from baseline to baseline. Good shot, McElrath. That was uh, some kind of impressive right there. Most definitely. Good burst of speed, good control. All the way off the glass. 17-9 now. The sales trying to get that one back, and they lose the handle on the ball. Gracie Wilson was looking around trying to figure out who she was going to pass it to, and while she was doing that, it just rolled off her fingertips. If I was the sales, I would stop McElrath right at half court because what she wants to do is dribble all the way from court to court and get those shots off. Gives it over to Parker. Down low, Brandewee, and we've got a push off. And that's how Brandewee created separation. So she gets caught with a shove. That is the first foul against her. Each team with only two fouls here in the first half. Stephanie Karras inbounds the ball. Back and forth with Gracie William. Hartley Gracie picked, Wilson. Sorry about that. Hartley picked up that full court press. Brandewee pulls down the rebound there and that ball off the front of the rim. Now Malena Williams, senior guard, puts it up and that one doesn't go. Boy, how it has turned around in that department, Randall, where now it's hardly putting up shots that are hitting the rim but not going through. Most definitely. They are feeding that ball to Brandon Lee down there. And we've got a foul. Shot was no good. And Bella Parker picks up a foul. As you can see, there's a little bit of frustration right now with Brandon Lee. She's getting the looks, but I think she's just maybe taking the shots a little bit too fast. Everything's all right. I think if she just settles down a little bit, she'll get there. Selena Davis hitting the first of her two foul shots. Chance to make it a six point game again if she can put this one through. And she does just that. And here comes the press from DeSales, broken easily by Hartley. Parker, oh, that's off the hand of uh, Milena Williams. That one got tipped before it ever got to her, and that's what caused that. Exactly. And losing the handle was Davis. It's a jump ball, and this is going to stay a DeSales ball. One thing I'm noticing with DeSales, too, is that they have a lot of depth. They're bringing in players left and right. Looks like they have a little bit more depth than Hartley, not as much size. But I always say this, I'll take depth over anything. 
Keep your players fresh. Elizabeth Meeker and Jaden Arnold check back into the game. McElrath almost made the defensive play, but couldn't quite complete it. And from right underneath, that shot went straight up in the air. Williams with some nice defense there. And now Hartley looking to start to put some points back on the board. One thing about Hartley is they're getting in their sets. And Williams lops that down low. Brandewick again off the glass in the side of the rim. And she tries to swat away a shot from behind. And the sales misses that shot. If I was Hartley, if I was the sales, I would stop Michael Rath right at half court and not let her penetrate as much because once she penetrates, she's at her best. Michael Rath and Parker. It's Parker with it right now. Now Williams puts it on the floor. Her shot is up. No good. Brandewee looking for the rebound. It rolls off her fingers. Opportunity again here for DeSales. Trying to drive to the basket. And Hartley stopped that one. 239 remaining here in the first half. There's a shot for three from Williams, and it's good. Great shot by Williams. Hartley's getting any shot that they want right now. Uh, I think there was a little breakdown on the defense. That was a great shot. Well, that'll help you to get some confidence back when you're starting to get frustrated about not being able to get points. As Brandon, we had that one broken up, but then out of bounds it goes. Selena Davis will do the inbounding here. Stephanie Karras driving, gets to the baseline, draws a foul. Karras putting that first one through. Echo Rath picking up the foul there on the shooting foul. And that one is good as well. 20 to 13. Hartley with the lead. And if you notice, they picked up Michael Rath a little bit. Well, there's not that many people in here that could hear that when you said it, but they still can't <laughs> stop her. She gets another one. Great shot by McElrath. She is hot. Now it's DeSales trying to counter. And didn't get the spin off the backboard that they wanted that time, and the ball goes out of bounds. And Hartley was last to touch it. Shania Davis checks back in for Hartley, and Brandewee comes out. I think Stephanie Karts was looking for a foul right there down low. She felt like she had got fouled. Inbound pass. And settling it down is Gracie Wilson. And a turning attempt there. My Womber doesn't go. And you can tell every time they take Brandewee out the game, the sales goes low, they play low. As soon as she comes out the game, they get that ball down low. Good job there by Bella Parker to survive the, fr the pressure by Selena Davis as uh, that ball was kicked. 106 to go here in the first half. Melena Williams will inbound it. Try to go in the lane there at the foul line, and it got knocked away by, from Davis. Now the sales. Driving it right in and getting the roll that time. Selena Davis, the sophomore. It was a great shot driving to the bucket by Selena Davis. Cashwell. 
Using that left hand to keep the ball away from pressure as she dribbles around, get it into Williams, back to Parker, long three, off the rim, no good. Deep shot by Parker, call that downtown. That's a good play by Hartley. As it just tie up the ball and the possession arrows in their favor. Twenty-two seconds to go here in this first half. Williams out beyond the top of the key for Parker. McElrath pulls up and got hit on the arm as she was taking the shot. So she will go to the foul line. Gracie Will, uh, Wilson gets called for the foul. Two shots here, and that first one is good. Let's see if she can finish off with this one as well. Yes, she does. Nothing but a swish. She now has 10 points here in this first half. She leads the Lady Hawks in points. I'm very impressed with her right now. Parker gets the ball in the turnover, and then turns it back over. She was just trying to make a pass. She knows there's not that much time left. She gets it back again. Ahead to Cashwell. She'll put it up and in. And that's going to end the first half. I love that ball control by Cashwell. The way she took it, got it into the left hand, and just guided it right off the glass. Great layup. I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing from the backcourt. They're playing great ball right now. Great defense. And one thing I've noticed about Parker and McElrath is they haven't came out of the game. I haven't seen them come out at all, have you? No, no, they've they played that entire first half. And uh, not only playing, it's one thing to be in there the whole time, but contributing the entire way. Exactly, they have a lot of energy. Like I said, I haven't seen them come out to the game. They are the ones that's keeping this up. I was looking for Brenda Wee, and not that Brenda Wee's playing bad at all. She's doing a good job. But those two backcourt uh, back players in Parker and Michael Rabb are playing great right now. Yeah, and, and again, we talked about this before the game. If one part of your game's not working or, or one player isn't doing uh, everything that they can do or they normally do, uh, other people have to pick up the slack. So for Brandon Wee, again, she's not getting points. Okay, that's fine. Get your rebounds and then let some of your teammates go out there and get the points. That's exactly what those guards have done in this game. Exactly. And one thing, I, I you know, I, I don't think the Cells is playing a bad game. They're just turning the ball over a little bit. They're kind of forcing their shots a little bit. One thing I'd like to see from DeSales going into the second half is when Brandon Wee's out that game, get those shots down low. Make sure you get those shots when she's out because they're there. For the 5'11 freshman Womber, she's a big, she's a big player, so you can get those uh, buckets down low to her. This is up to her to make them. Yes, and 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 she did that. Uh, uh, as we went along there in the second quarter, she got some looks and she took advantage of those opportunities. But uh, it is 26 to 15, and the first half is in the books here at Bishop Hartley, and the Lady Hawks have the lead over St. Francis to Sales. It is halftime, and this is Lady Hawks basketball here on Score on Air. Do you have design ideas for T-shirts, but you're not sure where to go? Go to Mojo Sports Gear. That's right, Mojo Sports Gear. And Mojo Sports Gear, you can get custom-made shirts. Whatever design you need, Mojo Sports Gear can provide it. Don't forget to grab a custom-made cap on your way out and rock the best headgear in the game. Give them a call at 614-864-6656. At 614-864-6656. I just wanted to play. I just want to play. I just want to play. I just want to play. 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 Along the way, I'm learning. Sportsmanship. Sportsmanship. Teamwork. Teamwork. How to work hard. How to work hard. Discipline. Hustle. Sacrifice. How to be a leader. Dedication. I just want to play. And along the way, I'm learning to put the team before myself. To put the team before myself. How to be a student. How to be a student. I'm learning to set a good example. How to work hard. To accept responsibility. That I represent my community. That I represent my community. I just wanted to play. 
and look where it took me. She's done it. Tiana Bartoleva has done it. From Elyria, Ohio, now an Olympic gold medalist. Looking for future leaders we can believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Ohio. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It includes learning to listen, accepting responsibility, being a good role model, and it's about respect. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. I mean, I don't totally know what opioids are, but... It doesn't happen here. Not in denial. No. No. Our kids are way too busy. My son has good friends. Don't live in denial, Ohio. Talk to your kids about drugs, and they'll be up to 50% less likely to use them. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 70 courses, including more than 30 free courses, such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. To learn more, visit the NFHS Learning Center. Your actions in the stands impact participating students, including your child. Be respectful. Be supportive. Do your part in creating a positive and educational environment for everyone. To learn more, watch the Parent Seat video at the NFHS Learning Center. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. In sports, you want to have a player that can get the job done right every time. A real all-star, somebody that's dependable and you can turn to when the game is tough. That player in the audio-video industry is the theater people. From setting up your home's Wi-Fi network and offices, conference rooms, to setting up home theater inside or outside, to setting up the systems to make your home run smarter and safer as well. The theater people can do it all with the quality of professionalism you can expect every single time. That isn't just a great all-around player. That is an all-star. That is why we are the leaders in audiovisual installation in Central Ohio. So call us at 614-604-6327. Or check out our website at ttpcolumbus.com to figure out which products will fit you. And don't forget, Amplify your personality with the theater. Do you have design ideas for t-shirts but you're not sure where to go? Go to Mojo Sports Gear. That's right, Mojo Sports Gear. At Mojo Sports Gear, you can get custom-made shirts. Whatever design you need, Mojo Sports Gear can provide it. Don't forget to grab a custom-made cap on your way out and rock the best headgear in the game. Give them a call at 614-864-6656. At 614-864-6656. I just wanted to play. I just want to play. I just want to play. I just want to play. 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 Along the way, I'm learning. Sportsmanship. Sportsmanship. Teamwork. Teamwork. How to work hard. How to work hard. Discipline. Hustle. Sacrifice. How to be a leader. Dedication. I just want to play. And along the way, I'm learning to put the team before myself. To put the team before myself. How to be a student. How to be a student. 
I'm learning to set a good example. How to work hard. To accept responsibility. That I represent my community. That I represent my community. I just wanted to play and look where it took me. She's done it! Tiana Bartoleva has done it! From Elyria, Ohio, now an Olympic gold medalist. Make sure you amplify your personality with the theater people. They can help with your entire home setup of entertainment or networking and security. Call 614-604-6327 or visit theaterpeople.com to build your dream home entertainment system. Tell you what, man, when I need a commercial, I'm calling you. <laughs> Bob Miguel, get along with Randall Smith Jr. here at the Dick Geyer Gymnasium at Bishop Hartley High School girls basketball with the Lady Hawks of Bishop Hartley leading the Lady Stallions of St. Francis de Sales by the score of 26 to 15. In the uh, first half of this game, uh, Kara McElrath was the uh, the top scorer for Bishop Hartley. She's got uh, 10 points in this game. Uh, you know, eight of them came from the floor and she had a couple of free throws to go along with it. Uh, Bella Parker had two baskets, and those were both three-pointers. Melena Williams also had a three-pointer for the Hawks, and Lexi Cashwell has cashed in with three baskets herself. Randall, here's one thing. All these names we're talking about, and oh, by the way, the other point belongs to Brandewe on a uh, foul throw, or a free throw, rather. Here's the thing. Cammie Quartercracks is one of the top scorers on this team. She has not played in the first half. She hasn't taken off the long sleeves the entire time here. Um, in what I normally do for a living in hockey, they would say a player is dinged up a little bit. Mm. So again, um, could she play? Yeah, she could come in and play at any time right now, but uh, they are, they're going without her. They don't need her in this game right now. They know they have some uh, big challenges down the road and they expect to go deep with this team. So uh, that's why one of the top scorers for the Lady Hawks hasn't been in this game tonight. Yeah, I was very interested in seeing her play tonight. Heard a lot of good things about her. Um, I'm just actually looking forward to seeing in the second half how DeSalle come, comes out and plays in the second half. And I want to see how Brandewe comes out and play the second half also. Because like you said, she only had one point. So I want to see if she can get more involved into this second half. Well, she just made a defensive block right there. And then the ball went out of bounds off of her which allows the sales to maintain possession of it. But as you said, for the sales, what are they going to do to start this second half? Are they going to get some points early? In the first half, it took them a while to get going. And Bella Parker makes a nice steal. Cashwell calling for the ball. She's got it. Good job to seal that off by the sales. She couldn't get to the basket. Good defense by the sales stallions. That ball bobbled there by Jaden Arnold. She gets back to it, tries to one-hand it up and off the glass. Didn't get it to go, and that's out of bounds. Nice take by Gracie Wilson, even though it didn't fall. It's a definitely good take. Hawks look to set it up offensively. Williams shot for three. Up, no good, off the front of the rim. Good job by Brandewee to pull down the rebound. Kicks it back out to Parker. Parker made a good decision there to put it on the floor. Back over to Williams, drives, pulls up. Brandwe pulled that down. It was an air ball that she took care of. And again, the possession is in Hartley's favor. McElrath with the shot off the rim. No good. And Cashwell, even though she came in there and got to it, it then got uh, last touched by Karras. I don't think there's a shot that Mathurek has not taken and that she doesn't like. <laughs> yeah, she is uh, she locked in in this game. Setting the tone. Williams all the way out to Cashwell. And down low for Brandewe, who finally puts it off the glass and in. You can see that big smile on her face. She's happy she got that bucket. Now let's see how she goes from here. Yeah, that uh, could be a bad sign for DeSales because if she does start to feel it, you know they're going to feed her. Most and definitely. Defensively, she makes a good play there, and good job by DeSales here. They pull down a couple of offensive rebounds, give themselves 
few more opportunities. Arnold kicks it into the corner. They'll drive the baseline and then maybe one pass too many, but Sales able to maintain possession of it. Selena Davis, she'll drive, then loses control. Cashwell able to settle it down. Good job to dribble behind the back and come up the floor, and then she gets uh, upended. Oh, a little behind the back there. Showing us something new there, wasn't she? Definitely. <laughs> Didn't see that first half. No, that's, that's a second half move, Randall. You know Definitely that. Definitely a second half move. <laughs> so the uh, foul was called against the sales. Jaden Arnold is called for that foul. That is the first one of the half. And with 538 here to go in the third quarter, we get a timeout. So the, it was kind of a, a little bit of a slow start, I guess you'd say, to this third quarter. But, you know, now Hartley's starting to uh, grab that momentum again. Most definitely. And I think what the DeSales coach did was he wanted to take another timeout like he did in the first quarter and just get them, the girls to regroup um, because he probably saw some things that he didn't like. He saw Brandon we get that bucket down low. And he probably just wanted to slow things down a little bit and say, hey, we got this. Keep playing defense on her and keep doing what you've been doing the whole first half. Yeah, and playing that defense on her frustrated her mm -hmm. in the first half. So uh, you're absolutely right. But again, as we talked about, it's been the guards that they have had the most trouble with uh, controlling them. Um, you know, especially in transition, as you've talked about, when Hartley brings it up the floor. Yeah, and that's where, you know, the sales has been having the hardest problem is that, that keeping the Parker and McElrath in the transition, keeping them out of the transition, because that's where they've been having problems that all night long. Not so much Brandon, we down low. Bella Parker, she run things from the top of the key. Cashwell will fakes the pass inside, back to Parker. Hand it off. Now Parker comes free. Tried to loft it into Brandewe. Double teamed right there, and that got knocked away. Sometimes this takes a little time out to get things squared away. Karras driving, turns around. That one kind of caught the side of the backboard. Cashwell again will settle it down and feed Milena Williams. Williams wants to take her time here. Under five minutes to go here in this third quarter. Hartley with a 13-point lead. Brandewee's got it. Put it on the floor and gets fouled as she shoots. Saw three defenders down there guarding her. Hey, and I say, whatever you have to do to stop the ball, do it. Nothing illegal, though. Gracie Sabo picks up the foul, her second of the game. Brandewee one for two in foul shots. I'll make it one for three. Notice they bring in uh, uh, Bridget Womber. They brought her in quick this third quarter. And Ella hits that one. So she's got two points, 29-15 lead. Turnover by DeSales. Parker up the floor, nice bounce pass. Cashwell again, so good at controlling that ball one-handed. Great decision maker by uh, Parker right there to get that ball off to Cashwell. Now it's McElrath with the steal, and she gets fouled. Jaden Arnold had no choice. Liking what I'm seeing from this backcourt. I know I keep saying it, but I'm loving what I'm seeing from this backcourt. Again, very uh, quick. You know, it's not just the, the quick maneuvers, but the quick decision making. Exactly, and they're tough. They're gritty. They play defense. They take good shots, make good passes. What more could you ask from a backcourt? They're not turning over the ball. Right. They got some pretty cool shoes on, too. <laughs> Can't forget that. A little press by Hartley now. Selena Davis with a bad pass, so that pressure worked in the favor of the Lady Hawks. And that's what you want to do with that press. When you run in that press, that's what you want. You want to get turnovers. You want to get turnovers out of that press. And that's exactly what the Hawks did. Yeah. 
Ekelrath trying to force it inside. Williams created a little time for herself. Bounce pass, top of the key. Now over to Parker for three, no good. I'll tell you what, that was a pretty good looking shot. I was surprised it didn't get in. And now a little battle for the ball. And it's going to be a foul or did somebody step on the line and go out of bounds? Yes, that's an out of bounds play. Looks like Michael Raff thought about taking that shot at first, then she passed it over to Parker for the better shot. And here comes the pressure. Try to trap a little bit. And the sales coughed it up. Parker with the ball, feeds it ahead. Cashwell is going to take it herself. And again, that ball control, that, that's the third or fourth time she scooped that thing one-handed off the glass, and now 30-second timeout will be taken by DeSales. Once again, that Euro step, man. I got to get in the gym and try that. <laughs> you might go to the gym on the way home. Well, most definitely. <laughs> you might just go on this gym floor when it's over and, I, and try I, it. I might think about asking her, hey, <laughs> can you teach me that? Yeah. Tell you what, Lexi Cashwell, what a night that she's having. Uh, she's got 10 points now oh. in this game. And, and what would you say, eight of them have to be on that layup? Most definitely. She's getting to the paint. She's making good decisions. And she's taking the ball strong to the cup. So great work here by the Lady Hawks. They are up 34 to 15. 3.36 to go in this third quarter. Bishop Hartley six and one coming into this game. They got some big matchups coming here. They had, they're going to, they had been a division one team and now they're back down in division two. So, you know, they, they've played the, the bigger schools in central Ohio. They're still going to play uh, some of them are on the schedule and they're going to continue to play them. But uh, what they are hoping is that they're going to be set up nicely for the postseason. There's a nice drive on the baseline and another ball that will not fall for the sales. And like you said earlier, Hartley is a very, their core players are all underclassmen. So looking for them to see, looking for them to do some big things in the years to come, as well as this year. Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at it, you're right. Most of them are underclassmen. But uh, Milena Williams, Cammie Quartercracks are the two seniors here. Um, well, and Shania Davis is a senior, but Quartercracks and Williams are two starters. And, you know, I think they feel that they can go a long way with those two with that underclassman support that's around them. For sure. Stepped on the baseline and went out of bounds to DeSales. Cashwell takes the inbound pass. Try to get it back to Brandon. She used her size that time to make sure she got the ball. Here's Davis with a shot, a little short. And it's picked up by Karras. She uses a little burst of speed, but and had the ball swatted away from behind. It's almost that time, Randall, like she got going so fast. Yeah. <laughs> and she saw what was there, and then she got caught from behind by Bella Parker. Right, a little, little out of control there. Now here's uh, more of that depth that you were talking about. Gracie Sabo is back into the game, and uh, Jaden Arnold has checked back in for DeSales, too. Just get it out front, look to set things up. Shania Davis trying to put a little bit of pressure on here. Arnold leaves it. And they'll move it back around on the left side. Karras drops it off. Now Jewett's trying to get uh, free. It's coming from the, the top of the arc on the right side to get into the lane. We'll wind up getting a uh, whistle here and a timeout. One thing I noticed is Hartley stepped up their defense a lot more. And, and you know, I know there's no shot clock in high school, but DeSales needs to get some shots off. But it's, it's kind of hard to because Hartley's playing real tough defense right now. Yeah, and I was going to ask you about that just on that series that you saw right there. They had them trapped on one side of the court. As I mentioned, Kara Jewett was on the right side. She was beyond the top of the arc. She just kept on uh, cutting down to the low post. They couldn't get the pass across to her because the defense was so good. One thing you want to credit 
a team is their defense. They're, they're not just doing it on the offensive ball side. They're doing it on the defensive side, too, when you got to give your tip your hats off to a team like that. Yeah, no doubt, because uh, if you don't want that other team to get back into the game in any way, shape, or form, you don't want them to feel good about themselves. You don't want them to get momentum, all of that stuff. Your defense dictates that. One thing I like about it is it looks like Hartley has stepped up their defense this second half. So we'll come out of the timeout here. And the sales will inbound. Kylie Van Fossen to throw it in. And Arnold has to go off her hand and out of bounds. We take that time out. He's trying to set everything up, and then that's the play on the inbound. Exactly. Well, now Hartley looking to set it up again. Davis drives in. She'll put it up off the mark. Brandon, we pulls it down and gets fouled. But again, there's that frustration. She thought she should have had that. I'll and tell you one thing. I think I think Brandon Wee is she's definitely has double digits and rebounds right now. Not for sure the full line stat, but she has to have double digit rebounds tonight. And again, when you are that size, when you've got that height, and you're playing a low post, if you're not getting points, you've got to be getting the rebounds, right? Most definitely. Most definitely. And here she hits both of her foul shots. As well as free throws, too. She's going down and she's hitting her free throw, so she's doing a good job. I agree with that. I, I think, on, you know, again, on those nights where you're not doing what you want to do offensively, just contribute. Just be a good teammate and contribute. Here's to sales now on the fast break, trying to get something, and they cannot. That shot looked like a good shot. It just hit the back of the rim. Now Hartley take advantage. Well, some good defense there. McElrath, they took care of her for a change. Cashwell trying to get the ball. What a feed as she was falling down over to Milena Williams. Good job right there. And that was the extra effort. Now it's uh, Arnold pokes it away from McElrath and uh, DeSales. They'll try to make something happen. And good job to track that down, but then a bad pass. So you saw uh, a good thing followed by a bad thing there by Kelly Van Fossen. Hartley is playing some great defense right now. Malena Williams pulls up from the foul line and buries it. Good shot fake by Malena Williams for the two-point bucket. She's got five points in this game now, down to a minute 10 remaining in the third quarter. 38-15, Lady Hawks have the lead. Bounce pass underneath and good job to put that one up and in and draw the foul, and that was uh, Gracie Sabo. Good bucket by the Stallions. Try to get something going here as we end the third quarter. Elena Williams gets called for the foul. Stephanie Karras will check out of the game. Selena Davis is in for her. Sabo, foul shot no good. And now Williams up the right side. McElrath, oh, look at that control. Didn't fall. It was pretty. It, it would have been prettier with the basket. Very, very pretty. You talk about uh, able to control your body while off balance. That was a great example of it there. Now the sales. One off the rim, no good. Second one, that is up and good. And Arnold is fouled on the way in. Good shot by Gracie Wilson. She's been playing tough all night. One thing about her, I haven't seen her keep her head down or anything like that. She's keep fighting, she's keep pushing, and good things are going to happen when you do that. Morgan Donnelly gets charged with the foul. Jaden Arnold, the sophomore, able to put that one up and complete the three-point play. It's 38 to 20, 38 seconds left in the third quarter. And we'll have a whistle and a foul. This will be against the sales. One thing I like about Hartley is coming into this second half, I said they need to keep down their turnovers, and they did, and they stepped up their defense. McElrath 
just uh, directing traffic a little bit. Goes right side to Donnelly. Donnelly draws crowd of two there. Hands it off to Cashman, or Cashwell, sorry, and she gets fouled. A little two, three action out of the cells right now. Kind of got Hartley rattled just a little bit. Jaden Arnold gets called for the foul. That is her third foul of the game. Lexi Cashwell missing. First time tonight she's missed. And that one won't go for her either. And the sales take a quick look at the clock. And Davis gets caught there right along the, uh, the sideline. Kind of trapped her over there. So they are going to inbound it. Van Fossen to do the inbounding. A little bounce pass in. Three seconds left, and the shot is no good. Williams has it, and she was cranking up, trying to throw it the length of the court. She got hit just as she was letting it go, but three quarters are gone now, and the Lady Hawks here at Bishop Hartley continue to do what they need to do. They have uh, got the offense, and as Randall said in that third quarter, they stepped up the defense as well, and they are leading by the score of 38 to 20. So it comes down to these uh, final eight minutes here, and it's just about completing the job right now. What I want to see is if Hartley is going to let off the brakes at all. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of their defense. I want to see more of it. I love I love a great defensive team, and I also want to see what DeSales can do in this final quarter to see if they're going to so 38 to 20, that is the score. And right now I want to tell you uh, to stay tuned after today's game for the Mojo Sports Gear Performance of the Week. For all your custom apparel needs, give Mojo Sports Gear a call at 614-864-6656, or you can find them online. Visit their website at mojosportsgear.com. One quarter to go here for the Lady Hawks of Bishop Hartley looking for the seventh win of the year. And DeSales will inbound. Selena Davis inbounding. Elizabeth Meeker. Got to get across that timeline and does. Had pressure. Come to Karras. Drives it to the foul line. Kicks it back out right side. Meeker put it on the floor and a little miscommunication there on that bounce pass. On the floor now for the sales of five Wilson, 11 Harris, 12 Davis, 14. So Hartley looking to add to the 18 point lead that they have, and they're going to take a timeout here. Here's another thing I wonder. You were talking about, you know, how they continue to play here. I wonder if they uh, even take advantage as they go along to get some more people in this game in this quarter. I always look at that. I, I always like to see all the players get in when it's a game that's kind of like out of reach. I like to see how 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 the coach can uh, get those players in who hasn't got as many minutes and get them some minutes because, you know, everybody wants to see their child get in and score a bucket, grab a rebound, get a steal, get an assist. So I like to see him, uh, Coach, uh, coach Dennis uh, get some players in there. Well, we'll see if they do that as they go along here with the, the lead that they do have. Right now, another thing is you're, you're looking to, to work on stuff here too, right? right. I mean, you, you have set plays like right now. You see them over here on the bench. That they're going through things. they got some set plays that they want to work on. This is the opportunity to do that because you're going to be in a game somewhere down the line that's going to be a closer one than this in the way of score. And you want to be able to execute those plays. You can run them in practice all day long. You right. want to run them in a game against a real defense. Right, right. And give Parker and Michael Raff a little break. They've done a lot. Mm -hmm. They're both still in there right now as Williams hands it off to Bella Parker. Back to McElrath. Good job to hold on to that ball. Now she'll take a shot for three. A little bit short. And Gracie she Wilson heard. back on the counterattack. <laughs> I think McElrath heard me say take her out. Yeah. <laughs> she went up for that shot as soon as I said it. 
Got a foul on the floor here, right along the baseline. Morgan Donnelly picks up the foul, her second. Third foul of the half for Bishop Hartley. Gracie Wilson puts it on the floor, gets it over to Meeker, back to Davis. And a shot from just beyond the foul line, no good. Try to follow her own shot, but Morgan Donnelly got there first. McElrath over to Parker, fakes the first shot, takes the second for three off the rim, no good. And this is out of bounds, and it's going to be DeSales' ball. I tell you what, Parker and McElrath are not letting up. Bella Parker hit that first three-point shot of the game that she saw those were the first three points of the game. They lasted for a while, actually. And she's taken a couple of three-pointers since then. They've both been pretty good-looking shots, but they've both gone off the rim. Here's the press by Hartley. Broken by the sales. Karras gets it down low and a nice job to put it up and in. Gracie Sabo. Good pass by Elizabeth Meeker. Here's Bella Parker for two. And that one misses. Brandewe follows up with the bucket. Then back the other way, the sales comes and they counter. Good shot by Sabo. 40 to 24. Donnelly with a pass. That one got knocked away. Wilson will chase for it. And so will uh, McElrath and try to put it right off the, the sales player and sliding to the court. Brandewe to get the jump ball and gain possession. Tell you what, that was some great action right there. So let me ask you this, Randall. We talked about Ella Brandewe not getting the points that she wants to get in this game. She's shown the frustration at times. Then in a game that 16 points separates teams, she comes back and makes a sliding play on the court like that to gain possession. You know what? I, I like it. I love it, actually. She's She's been keeping her head in the game. She was down a little bit. She wasn't getting the buckets that she wants, but she definitely got the looks. And just doing that right there, leaving it all on the floor, can't ask for nothing better out of a player. Yeah, I agree with you. I like that. That's the, you know, I talked earlier about be a team player and, and doing that. That's a team player. There's a carry on the part of the sales. Reminded me of uh, one of her dad's old teammates, Chris Gent. He was a guy who always slid on the ground, left it all <laughs> on the floor. Oh, nice dish to Brandon when she gets fouled. She will go back to the line. And one thing about Brandon, when she's just a sophomore, so she has a lot of growing to do. She's going to be fine. Um, great player. Love her energy. Love her attitude. First of two, she gets the roll off the front of the rim. Kara Jewett comes back in. Second shot is also good. She's now got eight points in this game. Doing a lot of it from the free throw line. Jaden Arnold, bad pass picked off by Milena Williams. One defender to beat, she does. Great defense. 20 point advantage, 44-24. DeSales back quickly, that one off the rim. Morgan Donnelly gets the uh, rebound. Had a foul there on Selena Davis of the sales. Now we're into the uh, one on one. Can't keep sp saying enough about their defense. Seems like every time Hartley scores a bucket, they come back and play even harder defense. And that's what I like. Morgan Donnelly has, his, has her first uh, point. She is a sophomore. Getting a chance to get some minutes in this game and the second half here. Next shot up and good as well. Nice job by Morgan. She puts two on the board. Under five minutes to play. Two, three, one. Two, three, one. 
Well, for DeSales, it becomes more of a daunting task with every point the other way. They're down by 22 now. Davis holds it, gets it to Meeker. Inside, bounce it right along the baseline. Good ball movement right there and a very nice finish by Gracie Sabo. Great ball movement. They had Brenda Wee kind of up top a little bit, so they got behind her and scored the bucket. Oh, and Ella got fouled and gets the basket. Now she's coming to life. So now she's in double digits. She's got 10. Now, I'm really interested to see how many rebounds she has also. You know, you were talking about earlier, you said she's a sophomore. She's going to grow. And it's funny when you say that because she's 6'3". But she, and she will grow physically, but she's going to grow mentally. And she's going to get, um, you know, better in that regard as it goes too. Exactly. And I'll be anxious to see, um, you know, how she develops over the years to come. There's the sales coming back. And just losing control of the ball. Kelly Kay. And uh, Ella's going to check out of the game right now for Hartley. Shania Davis is back in to take her spot. Parker tried to get two bodies on her. Couldn't. Davis, little head fake. Pass on the right side. Donnelly into the corner. Williams from the baseline. That's good. Donnelly's having a great second half. And again, as we talked about, another underclassman. 5'7", 10th grader. Get a whistle here, and I think they got to, uh, well, the, the net was caught up in the rim, so they have to inbound it again. The crowd said, good job, Eric. <laughs> So a little, uh, little slow down here after that, but finally, Kylie Van Fossen inbounds it. Gracie Wilson, back to Van Fossen. Cross to Arnold, down into the corner. Here's a shot, this is for two, no good. Bella Parker right there to pull it in. And Parker pulls up, jump shot, back of the rim, no good. Been kind of a theme for Bella here in the second half. She's had some great looks at no points. She's taking a lot of good shots. I think she could have probably passed that to McElrath a little bit. I think everybody thought she was going to pass it. Yeah. <laughs> could be honest with you. Another shot off the front of the rim, no good, but Wilson pulls down that rebound. Now Wombert, that is no good. A lot of physical play right underneath the basket there. Under three minutes to go, and this shot is up, and that is good. Finally, DeSales is able to make something out of that as Kelly Kay gets the basket. One thing I like about DeSales is they're not giving up. Even though the, the point spread is getting a little bit further and further away from them, they're still fighting. They keep going. They're not giving up. Bella Parker in the corner. Trying to give it back to McElrath. She returns it to Parker, and we get a uh, no shot here as timeout was called. So Donald Dennis requested time. Bella Parker wasn't happy. She was setting up for a shot from the corner for three. And she wanted that shot. Yeah, she had an open look. <laughs> she had no defenders in front of her. But uh, the timeout on the floor here with 2.32 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And again, they'll draw up the play and they'll look to uh, get something going off the inbounds pass. And like I said, well, uh, before you told me, talked to me, uh, DeSales, you, you wouldn't know that they were down by almost 30 points. They got their heads up. Um, they, they're still fighting. They're still playing defense. And that's one thing about a good team that you always want to see. It's a team that doesn't quit. They're not quitters. They're still out here with their heads up, and they're still playing. Yeah, they are. There's no uh, question about that. And, you know, you, you look at the... Um, you know, the players that they have on the floor, they've got some, got a couple of seniors out there, but they also have some younger players that are going to grow and develop in their system too. Lexi Cashwell gets hit, but still gets the bucket. She's having a great second half. She's got 14 points now. 
And I would like to bet at least eight of them has been in the second half. Yes, you're right. Now it's working on that defense. Set up in a 2-3 is Hartley. Sales, a little bit of uh, indecision there as to what to do, and then the ball gets tipped and winds up going out of bounds. Last touch by DeSales. As Morgan Donnelly will inbound. Under two minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Morgan Donnelly across the court to Bella Parker, drives it along the baseline, now turns. Back to Shania Davis. Lady Hawks taking their time here. Want to play for a good shot. Davis thinks she has it. She couldn't get that one to, to go. Mella Parker winds up with the dough and gets hit underneath. <laughs> Parker came out of nowhere with that. That good rebound. And she drew the foul. Yeah, she's going to the line here. Her first trip to the free throw line in this game. She's got six points. They have come off a pair of three pointers. That first shot is good. You would think that Bella had a little bit more points because she's all over the course. She does so much on the defensive side. She's rebounding. She's making great passes. Yeah, it's just been a little bit of uh, bad luck, been a little bit snake bitten here in the second half of this game. Turnover. Ecklerath up the floor, tries to lay up. Too much on it. Cashwell lost it. So it was stripped away, and now it's DeSales that wants to settle it down. Hartley's going to do a uh, kind of like a line change of, in hockey. They're going to bring in almost a totally different team here oh, yeah. at the next stoppage. Here's a shot that is in and out. Cashwell has the ball, and we'll get a whistle and a timeout called. So uh, Donald Dennis wants to get those players in, and he can do it off the timeout here with 51.3 seconds left. Well, again, you talked about it, Randall. That this will give everybody a chance to get in there and play a little bit, and, uh, you know, it's... It, it's not going to be a ton of time here, but it's going to be a little varsity experience. And for your starters, your main players, you got a chance to work on a lot of things in a live game situation, which is another thing you wanted to get out of this game. Yeah, I'm very impressed with what I saw out of Hartley. Um, they're playing great, great defense, taking good shots. They have a lot of good depth. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I'm very interested to see how far they go this season. Autumn Wood, Sophie Payer in this game right now. Uh, Emery Minnick is in. And uh, Ryan Franklin, I knew I was missing one. Morgan Donnelly, the only one that stays in. The other four players all change. Here's to sales. Selena Davis being guarded. And the ball winds up out of bounds. It's going to be a Hartley ball here. Morgan Donnelly leading the charge, puts it on the floor, bounces it right side. Franklin with a shot that's a little bit short. And we've got a whistle. And a jump ball that favors to Sales. 21 seconds left here. Sales turns, shoots, and that's no good. Kara Jude was just trying to force that one up and in. <laughs> Chance for one more shot here, perhaps for Hartley. It's Donnelly for three, and it is no good, and time runs out. So the Lady Hawks of Bishop Hartley score a big home win tonight. 26 point advantage and a victory. 54 to 28. They beat the sales. Again, Randall talked about this through the entire game for the sales. It was a slow start. They got it going. Um, they never quit at the end, as you said, but for the Lady Hawks, they felt they had the better team coming into this one, and the final score proves that they did. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, 
I like what I've seen tonight out of several players for Hartley. I like what I've seen out of uh, Parker. I like what I've seen out of uh, McElrath. I like what I've seen out of Cashwell. I also like what I've seen out of Brandewee tonight. So they have a lot of talent. Very interested to see how far they go this year. So let's see, when it comes to uh, the final points in this game, uh, they wind up having, I think it's, uh, finished by math here, three players that wind up in double digits. One, two, three, four, six. Uh, yeah, Brandon, we just made it with 10. So uh, they wind up with uh, three players in double digits. Uh, Lexi Cashwell had 12. Uh, Kara McElrath, she led everybody on the team in scoring with 13. Then you had Brandon, that had the 10 points. Milena Williams had uh, nine, Bella Parker finishes with eight. Morgan Donnelly had a couple of uh, free throws for two points in this game. So they spread it around, but the players that they wanted to have a big game, the players they thought should be having big games, I think the numbers say they did have the big game tonight. Most definitely. And it, what I'm hearing from those scores, everybody got a chance to touch the ball and put the ball in the bucket. A um, lot of lot of balanced scoring. Um, nobody had a whole, whole bunch of points, but Everybody got a chance to get in there and, and do some good things. And like I said, I like what I see from that backcourt. I like what I see from the, the down low post with Brandon Wee. And I'm, like I said, I'm very interested in seeing uh, how they finish this season and how far they go in the tournament. Absolutely. It's going to be uh, it's going to be fun to watch because they are talented. And again, they did this without one of their best players in Cammy quarter cracks tonight. So um, she had a chance to to take off and be a spectator and a cheerleader here tonight and watch this one. And her teammates went out and they got the job done. 54 28. The final score once again as the Lady Hawks get the victory. Randall, this was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Great most, job. Most definitely. I lie. Enjoyed it. I think you carried me a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first game of the season. I'm supposed so, uh, to do that. That's my yeah, job right yeah, now. Next yeah. time we'll do it the other way. Most definitely. You can carry me next time. How's that? <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> All right. For Randall Smith Jr., I'm Bob McElligot. Thanks for being with us tonight. Again, the Lady Hawks beat the sales 54 to 28 is the final score. And this has been Bishop Hartley, Lady Hawks basketball here on Score on Air.